Greetings to you, my dear good friends. We have come again today, the fourth Sunday of Lent. My dear people of God, the church presents to us the readings as follows. The first reading comes from the first Samuel, first book of Samuel, chapter 16, from verse 1, from verse 6 to 7, and from verse 10 to 13. The responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. And the second reading comes from the second reading comes from Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 8 to 14. And the gospel comes from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 9, from verse 1 to 41. In the Gospel, we have presented the story on how Jesus cured a blind man. This man was born blind. And the question came to Jesus concerning the blindness of this man. Was it as a result of his own sin? or the sins of the parents. How come about it that a child came with blindness into this world? So, our Lord Jesus Christ, giving the response to the question, made it evident that it is neither the sin of the man born blind, nor the sins of of the parents that caused the blindness. But that the situation came about for the glory of God. That reminds me of what Jesus said in John chapter 11 at the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus concerning the situation of Lazarus who was already dead. Jesus said that this sickness will not lead to death, but it is a situation that came about for the glory of God to be revealed. In your life and in my life, there are situations, there are kinds of persecutions and sufferings, difficulties, challenges that we may be encountering and some people may be thinking that it, be, it is because of one sin or the other that the person is undergoing what he or she is undergoing. But in reality, situations can come to good people and bad people. Most often it's not based on sin. Situations coming to you and I let us see them as opportunity to glorify the name of the Lord. There are situations meant to reveal more the glory of God among humanity. And so, I enjoin you, my dear good friends, to stop criticizing people unnecessarily. Blind criticisms. Blind criticisms. Many people are suffering so much in the hands of people who are criticizing them blindly. Due to one thing or the other that is happening in your life or in the life of your family or in your business, people will start criticizing you, 
destructively and negatively. That is not good. So, to such people that always venture into destructive, negative criticisms against their fellow, against their neighbor, my question to you is, are you one of the surviving scribes and Pharisees who spent much of their time criticizing Jesus in as much as they have seen a wonderful thing that Jesus has done on the Sabbath day, a day that's supposed to be de dedicated to God, but Jesus did a great work that will also elevate the glory of God. But these people, they we are only finding a way to incriminate, incriminate the actions of Jesus. They never saw any good in what Jesus did. A man born, born blind. A man born blind, Jesus made him to see again. Instead of dwelling in the miracle of Jesus and exalting the name of the Lord, thanking God for the life of the man who was saved from blindness, they spent all their time trying to incriminate Jesus and also they succeeded in casting the man out of the synagogue. They banished him. I enjoy you to reflect well today with me. And if you find yourself in any position in government or in the church, you and I need to be very careful so that we will not be depicting the character of these people that we read today in the gospel, the scribes and the Pharisees, who never saw any good in Jesus, who never saw any good in the man that was healed, who never saw anything good in the healing that took place. A situation that is supposed to be a moment of praises to God, they use this to criticize and argue blindly. So, who is then blind? The man who was blind started seeing. He was no longer blind. But those who claim that they, are, they, are, uh, they have their sight, that they are seeing, they are the real people that are blind. See, Jesus concluded that he came so that those who we are blind, we see. And those who are seeing, we become blind. My dear good friends, today the man that was healed, he testified and praised the name of the living God, saying that Jesus is a prophet. Because they were asking him, trying to bribe him, to lure him into error, into saying that Jesus is a sinner, that Jesus uh, did something that is bad. But the man confessed with his own mouth that Jesus, this man that he me, is a prophet. And don't say that he's a sinner. Don't say that he's a, a bad man because if he's a bad man, God will not hear his voice. God will not hear me through him. So my dear good friends, the second reading made it evident to us that we are people of light. So we don't need to walk in darkness. We should be the light of the world. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. We are the light of the world. And Jesus is the super light himself. He is the light of the world. And we are sharing in the light of Christ. So we should cast away from us works and actions of darkness. And bear the light always, everywhere. See how David was elevated in the first reading. He was nearly neglected by the family members. When Samuel went to anoint a man that God wanted to anoint, they were presenting giants, strong and handsome sons. And the Spirit of God ministered that there is still another one, and that one is the one that should be anointed, and that was David. So, my dear good friends, let us always acknowledge the fact that God has a plan for each of us. God has a plan for each of us. He knows our capabilities, and he works 
with us according to our own strength. The strength of David is not the strength of the elder brother. Everything varies. We are working according to our own pace, according to our own talents, according to our own capabilities. We are differently made. Let us acknowledge that and work according to that. Unhealthy criticisms should be evicted. Unhealthy, destructive criticisms, blind criticisms should be removed from our lives, from our Christian lives. Because it makes one a dwarf. It makes one stagnant. It makes one not to grow in the spirit of Christ. Let us encourage one another. Let us support one another. And let us do what St. Paul said in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Let us bear one another's burden. I wish you well. And I pray for you that the Almighty God will continue to be with you and bless you and your family members. Have a nice Sunday. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Bye. Amen.